I don't have intro music anymore. You know why? Because I don't care to go on my other hard drive and look for it. It's that simple. Meant to Offend is coming up on Patreon for all you crazy people who like when I talk of a load of shit, right? And by the way, I shouldn't have said that because I just got demonetized for saying the S word right at the beginning of this video. So that was a big mistake right off the bat. We're going to make a lot less money on this. Well, okay. Listen, it's the difference of $17 versus $4. I'll take the $4 and be happy to buy a coffee. In fact, I already did. Here it is. Let's drink it now. But Greg Hamilton was released by the WWE. We're going to talk about that and a couple other things real quick. Just, you know, just sitting here real quick talking about some things and blah, blah. This is, um, this part of the video is obviously for YouTube, for you guys wrestling-wise. And then this will continue into the Meant to Offend podcast on Patreon. So look for that. But just to answer a few questions really quickly, yes, tonight I will not be in Boston. Um, I'm just way too busy to, to, to get out there. Obviously, I used to be 20 minutes away from the Aganis Arena. Now I'm about 45 minutes away from it and just so much stuff going on. Plus, I don't even have a ticket yet and all that other stuff. So not going to be able to do that. Um, so enjoy it, man. Everybody going. Have a great time. I hope you have fun. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have a party at my place. I don't know, later on or something like that. So let's get into, listen, now Greg Hamilton says that they mutually parted ways. That's what he says. The other day, Greg Hamilton tweeted out something where he, he got involved with a rapper or somebody. You know, I care so little. I don't, I don't even want to look up the names, the facts about it. Just the bottom line is a rapper guy or DJ guy or somebody sampled Greg Hamilton's voice. And I don't know what, what like, the welcome to Raw or whatever. And Greg Hamilton tweeted out, like, yeah, you can't do that, bro. Um, you know, you should take this down or stop doing this before I get the WWE lawyers on you or something like that. And, and then a day later or just a little bit later, suddenly he's fired from WWE. Now, Greg claims it's mutually parting ways. Probably, I, I don't know why. I mean, what, I, I maybe that's him trying to... So, at first I thought this meant, okay, WWE wants to look good, so say you're mutually parting ways, it has nothing to do with that, and we'll give you all your extra payments and things like that. And so he's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But, you know, it also could be that, that Greg Hamilton just doesn't want to come out and say, hey, I got fired. You know, so instead of that, he says, oh, we mutually parted ways because I was going to leave there anyway because 52 weeks on the road and being away from family and it's a grind and mental health and things like that. I don't think he would have left unless, I mean, I think there is mental health playing into it. I think Twitter and the world and, and, the re, and the, how mean everybody is on Twitter now. Imagine if back in the day all your fan mail got to you Every day, instantly. That's essentially what Twitter can be, right? Anybody writing anything good about you, anything bad about you, and most people seek out the bad, so even if it's about you, it's about you seek out the bad. So every day you're inundated immediately with all the negative if you want to absorb it yourself, you know? And so you absorb it, um, and, you know, the mental health stuff starts creeping in to a lot of people, I think. I think people are developing these issues based on social media. Uh, you know, it's happened to me, and I've never thought things like that would happen to me. I, I never ever thought it would happen to me. You know, I remember this This used to be something that J.D. dealt with back when he used to be on Out of Nowhere with me, and he was dealing through a lot of mental health stuff, and I never understood it because I was like, man, aren't you happy to be on YouTube? And we have thousands of viewers. We have people supporting our channels. Like, well, it was great. But the negative really got to him, and his own personal life was getting to him and things like that, and so he really had trouble, you know, making it to the shows because he was just depressed. Even though it was fun to do these shows, it's what he wanted to do, what I want to do, what everybody wanted to do. He just didn't really have the time for it sometimes because he... Didn't feel good, and I get that. And I think that Greg Hamilton was in that realm, and that's why he was lashing out at somebody on, on Twitter, you know, like, oh, you can't use my voice, you know, we'll get the WWE lawyers after you. And then you get fired, and now it's just kind of like, oh, well, fuck, whatever, I was leaving anyway or whatever. I, but, yeah, I don't think that he, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know, I don't think he was, act like, 100% looking to leave, but I do think that, you know, leaving probably was getting inevitable in his own head. But so WWE basically fired him for making them look like look bad, I guess. You know, it, it, listen, they probably said, li, li, listen, dude, if somebody's sampling your voice and you you have, think there's some kind of copyright or issue with it, come to us in the background and say, hey, will you look into this? This guy's these people are sampling my voice. 
and then WWE could go and maybe send a cease and desist or send a request that they stop doing it or whatever else like that. But instead, Greg Hamilton just goes out and says this on Twitter, like, we'll get the lawyers after you, which is not a good look, right? Like, that's not very good look. In fact, it's surprising to me that he would do that because he seems like a more level-headed person. But I don't know, maybe he had a couple of drinks and he was like, you know what? I'm not getting paid enough for this. I'm gone all the time. People treat me like a celebrity, but yet I'm paid like a like a like nobody. I don't know. I don't know what Greg Hamilton gets paid. I don't know what he gets paid. If he gets paid, you know, one hundred fifty thousand, I guess that's pretty good. But you're away a lot from your family, you know. Maybe, but by now, I mean, maybe maybe someone like Greg, maybe Greg Hamilton wants like three hundred thousand. Give me three hundred thousand dollars, man. I'm your announcer. I'm your main guy. You know, and if and if he's not getting that and he's getting 150 or 200 or 80 or whatever it is, you know, at that point, maybe starts thinking like, man, this is really worth it. I feel like I'm dead all the time. Always going to travel. Going to remember all these things. People screaming, yelling. I'm on tour. I don't see my family. People just shitting on you all day on the social media and I don't get a pay raise. I mean, maybe that's what he's, you know, and now he sees other people using his voice who are millionaires and stuff like that. And he's like, yo, I want some of that money because I'm making one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year slaving for this company i feel like and you know some other guy who's a millionaire is sampling my voice you know what the hell is going on um i think that that's that's got to be where he's at because somebody happy wouldn't say that they'd just be like oh that's cool that guy's sampling my voice that's pretty cool like like if you're making two million three million four million dollars a year with the wwe as an announcer and some DJ somewhere was playing your voice a little bit or whatever. You, you, I, I feel like you'd be way happier. So you'd just be like, "Yeah, cool, man. Like that's that's crazy. That's wicked. What what an honor. You know, that's pretty cool. See you later." But somebody who's struggling or like barely making it financially, as someone who's on TV and working the WWE schedule, you know, maybe they're 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 bitter. You know, right? It feels like a bitter thing. I mean, that makes that makes sense to me. But anyway, funny thing, Jake just messaged me and said, hey, dude, are you doing an AEW review tonight? Are you kidding me, Jake? You Do you honestly believe? Let me ask you this, guys out there, and people do this to me on Twitter, too. Let me ask you, Jake, and I know it sounds like Jake's going to be here tonight for the AEW review. Let me ask you guys out there, do you honestly think that I would sit through three hours of Monday Night Raw, that atrocious show, and review it, but not sit through AEW? Are you serious? Come on. Come on. Let's be better. Be better. No, I'm just sorry. I just wanted to say be better. I think that's the worst thing. Yeah, can you imagine if I sat through three hours of Raw and then I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to cover AEW though, but I'm going to sit through three hours of PG horse manure. Like that. that's a good idea. Absolutely friggin' not. I am absolutely covering AEW tonight in Boston, but I won't be in Boston. I'll be at home, so... Um, I've just got too much stuff going on, you know, see, I only go places when I get free tickets. Shout out to Cody Rhodes for the last time. It was really fun. I'll save that press pass forever. The second ever AEW show. And I got a press pass for it. And there was only two. There's only two press passes that were given out me and another guy. Right. And we're at AEW. And that was the second ever AEW. It's got to be worth something, right? A, one of the press pass stickers from the second AEW Dynamite ever on TNT. Got to be worth something, right? But it's but it's kind of priceless to me, you know? Thank you to Cody and Brandy. Just like to say that once in a while I make jokes about everybody and everything and like, like to say, man, that they were so nice to me. It's almost unbelievable, dude. And all the AEW staff behind the scenes, they were sweet. They were helpful. They were nice. Um, just absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, WWE in, in the past has been not nice. Now, they did fire the guy that I used to try to talk to about things. And, you know, but, you know, I will say that I will say Road Dog is a great guy. Road Dog's a great guy. Triple H is a great guy. Uh, Stephanie was great. Uh, some of the people behind the scenes were great as well. So, like, I really I don't want to say one's better than the other. There was just an AEW was obviously smaller so they had more time to take with me. So it's not fair to judge that because there's so many like ladders and people and operating things in WWE that they don't have time to personally spend on you, you know, like Cody, like, like AEW did, you know, for me. So that's the only thing I can say is that they're both really good. 
but it's just AEW obviously is smaller. They're a little more tight knit family um, at this point with the way the company sizes, and just you know that obviously is going to rub off on you. So you know Enzo Amore is returning uh, back to a MLW rather. Um, we'll see what happens with Enzo. Uh, people think he's going to come back to WWE. I'm you know I don't know about that. And uh, that's it, man, for the wrestling as far as my little rant here on the wrestling. Now I'm going to go talk about the storm that just blew down trees around my neighborhood. Uh, people have some questions for me. I'm going to talk about those on Patreon. And, of course, uh, there's a bunch of other little things to talk about. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below with what you think. I'll see you tonight for the AEW Review Live. Looks like Jake's going to be in the house. Uh, leave a comment down below. And if anybody drops a thanks, the dollar sign thanks down below, and drops anything, I will pin that comment, the top thanker. Thanker? It's just a weird thing to say. The top thanker? I don't know. The top person who thanks, I'll put pin you to the top of this thing, and I'll write elephant balls under, below you. I don't know. Something crazy. Anyway, thanks for the support. And everybody who jumped on Patreon, we're only five patrons away from 300. If we can do that in the next couple of days, man, I will explode in the pants. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you tonight for the AEW review. Um, but if you want to continue listening to this podcast, which is going to be another 10, 20, 30 minutes, uh, definitely go over to Patreon and download it or play it right onto your audio device, tablet, phone, TV, desktop, whatever you want to do. You can download, save it, play it, whatever. Um, that's about it. I'll see you tonight for the AEW review. All right. So everybody else, I hope you guys are uh, doing good. And I got my coffee here. I'm going to dump it down my throat. <laughs>